In this video, we're going to prove the product rule right from the definition of derivative. Now, this is in contrast to the other video I did where I gave a sketch of the proof of the product rule using geometric intuition, um, looking at a diagram of what the product meant in terms of areas, and then argued how the change in the product should behave in terms of the change in the in individual pieces. That's very nice for illustrating why the form of the product rule is as it is. This proof I'm about to establish here comes right from the definition of derivative, and it's a little bit more mechanical. Some of the intuition is lost, but it is a proof nonetheless. And so I just want to show you how it ties back to the definition of derivative that we've been using. So we're looking at the derivative of the product. Well, that is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h times g of x plus h. So it's the function at x plus h minus the function at x all over h. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a little fancy trick. I'm going to add 0 in in a fancy way. Now how am I going to do this and why am I going to do this? Well one of the issues is I need to know how to use this fact. Both f and g are differentiable. I'm going to need to use that fact in my argument somewhere. What it means for them to be differentiable it means that the limit defining their derivatives actually exists. So I'm going to try to get those limits to show themselves in here. And so how am I going to do that? That's where adding 0 in, in a fancy way, comes in handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away f of x plus h, g of x. Okay, you may look at this expression up top and say, well, that didn't actually appear up top. And you're right, it doesn't appear up top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it back in. And then I've got that last term. So what I've actually done here is I've added 0 in in a fancy way. I've added 0 in in a strategic way. What was my strategy behind doing this? It was now to look at those first two terms and say, well, they have an x plus h in common. So I can factor them out. And I can divide h into the first term there. Similarly, I have for that the second two terms, I have this g of x in common. So I'm going to factor that out. So I'm going to f of x plus h minus f of x. And I'm factoring that g of x out. And then I've got all of that over h. Now, all of this stuff over h, I'm just going to move the h underneath that second term there. And again, all of this stuff was over h means I'm just going to move that h underneath that one. So what I've done is. I've added 0 in, in a fancy way, split the limit up. I've split it up in such a way that now I can actually compute the limit. What do each of these things go to? Well, in this limit, as h goes to 0, f of x plus h, that goes to f of x. What does this go to? Well, as h goes to 0, this is the definition of derivative for g. So this is g prime of x. And what does this go to? Well, that's the limit definition of the derivative of f. So that's f prime of x. And as h goes to 0, well, g of x, that's just g of x. So this whole thing, this whole limit, boils down to f of x, g prime of x, plus f prime of x, g of x. And that ends our proof. That is exactly what we wanted to show. The product rule is given by this expression and that's what we've now proven.